The purpose of the Lemon Grove Oral History Project is to recognize the families of Lemon Grove who resisted the plan of the Lemon Grove School Board to segregate its grammar school and move Mexican-American students to an inferior, renovated one-room building. The structure, which the Mexican-American community referred to as a barn, was located in Olive Street, the heart of Lemon Grove's Mexican-American community and would serve students from kindergarten to the eighth grade. The parents of the Mexican-American students were gravely concerned and recognized that not only would their children be treated differently and receive an education inferior to that of their white classmates, but they would also miss out on the benefit of developing valuable social and language skills by attending school alongside native English speakers. In 1931, the concerned parents organized El Comité de Vecinos de Lemon Grove, the Lemon Grove Neighbors Committee. With the economic fear of the times and discrimination against Mexicans growing, the crisis facing the Lemon Grove community aroused several key individuals to take a stand against the regressive policy of separate schools. Among the leaders was Juan González, an amazing activist who tirelessly worked to organize the community. Ricardo Castellanos, Juan Bonilla, and others also joined El Comité de Vecinos de Lemon Grove. These brave men and women felt so strongly about their children's education that they risked their economic and social standing by challenging the dominant socioeconomic class. And in 1931, that committee sued the Lemon Grove School Board. That court case would be the first successful desegregation case in the United States and is now being recognized in our history texts. This documentary is a testament to the courage of those involved and speaks to their belief in the power and importance of education. It is important to tell this story so that future generations will not forget the courage and steadfastness the leaders and families of Lemon Grove showed by speaking out against prejudice and discrimination. Our film is also intended to recognize the few remaining Lemon Grove residents who still have the memories of their childhood experiences. As their descendants, we are blessed and graced by their rich lives. These are some of their stories. Uh, my name is Louis Gonzalez, I'm son of Juan Gonzalez. My name is uh, Maria Luisa Padilla. I, live in, I was born in Mazatlan in, in 1922. My name is Henry Gonzalez, and I'm the youngest of the Gonzalez clan. Uh, I was number 14 of, of 14. Uh, my name is Richard Ibarra, uh, placement in the family. I uh, oldest son of uh, Minnie Gonzalez Ibarra. My name is Christine Gomez Counts. I am the daughter of Elisa Gomez. Elisa Gomez, but my main name was Gonzalez. Uh, my mom always told us about the Lemon Grove incident. We would uh, go on rides to Lemon Grove. That's where my mom liked my father to take us on rides and she wanted to drive around Lemon Grove. And then she would start talking about her childhood there in Lemon Grove and she always talked about the Lemon Grove incident. Um, they, they wanted to separate the Mexicans from the whites. So they made a, a, a room, one big room, and you could see through it. You know, the, the boards were like this, you could see through. I remember my father saying that. And, um, and they wanted to put all the Mexican children in that run, one room. And then the nice school that was plastered and nice, it was just for the whites. So my father got, went knocking at the doors and told the people, the Mexican people, there was only about two blocks of us Mexicans, and told them, don't send your children to school. And to this day, I want to know why my father had that in him, to, that, that it was wrong. 
And, and uh, there's a lot of things now that I'm older that I would like to know and I didn't ask my father. And that's one of them. And everybody said they're supposed to be together, not separate, <laughs> because uh, they, they have to adjust to the language, English. Let's learn the English better. And sometimes, you know, the, the, the people, they, they don't agree. So that's why they have so many, so much, much uh, arguments. Because a lot of people didn't want to go along with him, you know, say, oh, no, we don't want to, we're going to get deported and we don't want to make any problems. And so uh, he had to do, he, he did it for months. He was you know, without a job just doing that. Oh, it affected my mother. <laughs> because she, she wanted him to go to work. And she kept saying, why don't the other men go? You know, like she said, maybe one could go one day, another another day. But he would knock at the doors and say, oh, no, Juanito, I can't go. So he had to go. He, he had it in him that they were going to have this at court. Uh, but he had come from a different background. He had come from uh, the Escobedo family. Uh, from Jerez Zacatecas, uh, they had educated him. They had sent him to military school as a kid. Uh, he was quite educated for his time. By the time he went with Pancho Villa at 17 years old, he was already educated. He could read and write beautifully. He could uh, speak eloquently. I mean, he could give up and give a speech. But yet, on this side of the border, he was a farm worker. Uh, you know, he picked lemons and vegetables just like everybody else. But in his heart, he was never just a farm worker. I, I wanted to be like them. I didn't want to be the way I was. I would look at mine and see the long braids with hoops on here. And the white ones didn't have that. They had short hair and little bangs. And so I wanted to be like this. And I told him what I wanted. You know, my hair was down to here. So they cut it short and they cut me bangs. And I was so happy because, you know, I didn't have those big hoops. <laughs> so to this day, I tell my kids, why was I like that? Why a seven-year-old little girl could see the difference of people and want to be the way I wanted to be? I didn't want to be the way I was. It's funny. It, it affected my mother, how she related to um, people as, she, as we grew up. How she raised us, that affected her. And it made her, it, that's how she made her decisions. One thing about, um, we didn't grow up speaking Spanish because my mom said that we were in the United States. The f language in the United States is English, and we were better off in school. We would be better off in school if we just spoke English. That was our first language because of how she was treated in Lemon Grove. Well, I think it, there's, a, there's a direct tie because history consistently repeats itself. It constantly repeats itself. And so here we are, you know, 80 some years later, the same situation is happening all over. I think the uh, the message is one that says, "Look, that happens, and it's part of it's part of the U.S. history. It happens to every wave of immigrants. It's just that ours is the longest lasting and the biggest in history, so it'll go on a lot longer than most. And so you got to battle through things and and get beyond fear. Uh, everybody, we all battle fears at times in our lives, but uh, but when you uh, can overcome the fears, that's when you can get things done. I just uh, I'm just proud of Juan Gonzalez, uh, the, the one that organized the people and. And with uh, the Alvarez family and uh, the Smith family and Barreños and and we still know each other. So you know, it's it's been 80 years and they they still know each other. So it's it's good. Growing up, hearing about my grandfather. First of all, you heard about him being with Pancho Villa and um, fighting for their rights. And that's what I um, feel my, gr my grandfather was doing. He was fighting for the rights of, for his children and then the other children in Lemon Grove. I think it's okay because I think that 
we've gained what he wanted us to gain. And as my kids and my grandkids forget about the Lemon Grove incident, my father will have achieved his goal, that we would become equal. I mean, I don't think he wanted us to, to be fighting all the time. He wanted us to be equal. And as we forget the Lemon Grove incident, it's because now our grandkids are now equal. And we've achieved what he set out to do.